Tonight on Connecticut's news station, a new strategy to tackle gun violence. America's top doctor has declared it a public health crisis, and now local advocates are weighing in. Rising humidity and stormy by this time tomorrow night. Your full forecast coming up. A group of residents in Southington up in arms over an alleged overreach by the town. Accusations include trespassing and destruction of a wildlife preserve, and it's all over a single pipe. They have a live report next. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. We begin tonight on the weather after a calm stretch to the start of the week. We're tracking another chance for storms tomorrow night. Thanks for joining us here on the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Sarah Sanchez. And I'm Bridget Bjorla. Good to be with you tonight. Here's a look at what we're tracking for tomorrow night. But scattered storms are not the only thing returning. It's getting hot and humid again. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us now with the first check of the forecast. Rachel, now that we're talking about it, I guess... It wasn't that humid today. No, the humidity will really be building in as we head through the day tomorrow. So you have one more night if you want to try to keep the windows open. Otherwise, heading into tomorrow, we've got the combination of both heat and humidity. We'll see highs around 90, but feeling like the mid 90s. It's a mostly dry day, but as we head towards the late afternoon, there could be a pop up shower. And then after or around dark, there could be some scattered strong to possibly severe storms. We'll be watching at least a couple stronger ones with some heavy rain, lightning and strong winds all possible. Right now we're looking at temperatures in the middle to upper 70s, upper 60s in Torrington and 73 currently in Bridgeport. As we head through the overnight hours, temperatures will be dropping back around 70 degrees and through the day tomorrow it's a warm start and it's a warmer finish. Even though a high temperature will be around 90, it'll feel like the mid 90s when you're factoring in that humidity and notice later in the day and especially at night, we'll see a rising chance for some of those storms developing and the Storm Prediction Center does currently have Connecticut in a level one risk for severe weather. It's a five level threat scale and the risk is higher for severe weather just to the west of us, but it is still a close call. So something that we'll be keeping a close eye on. Following this, the humidity drops back again for later this week. We'll talk about all the changes ahead and show you the future radar coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. Good news to bring you out of West Haven. The two toddlers nearly killed by their father over the weekend are out of intensive care tonight. The twins are being treated at Yale New Haven Hospital after their father, Romney Desernovo, allegedly tried drowning them at the beach. The mayor of West Haven says their condition is improving. They're still at the hospital receiving treatment, though. The father facing a slew of charges and is now in police custody. He'll be in court next week. The New Haven and uh, New Haven and the city's board of uh, ed is alerting hundreds of people saying they may have been affected by a data privacy incident and their personal information might have been compromised. There was a cyber attack last year. More than six million dollars was stolen from the public school system and much of that money was recovered. But now the city and the school district are giving residents a warning about their personal information potentially being compromised. At this point, the city doesn't believe there have been any instances of identity theft. Today, the U.S. Surgeon General declared gun violence a public health crisis. And this comes as more than half of adults here in the country have experienced some form of gun-related crisis themselves. Fox 61's Jake Garcia joins us in studio with the Surgeon General's alert and how Connecticut is reacting. Jake. Well, Sarah and Bridget, today's announcement causing mixed emotions across the country, with many in Connecticut saying addressing gun violence as a public health crisis is long overdue, while others say this is just politics. Firearm violence is a public health crisis. Our failure to address it is a moral crisis. Dr. Vivek Murthy issued a historic advisory on gun violence Tuesday, a first for the Office of the Surgeon General. Dr. Murthy says gun violence causes a ripple of harm from those who die or are injured to witnesses and communities, in which the Surgeon General says leads to collective trauma. The collective trauma and fear that Americans are experiencing is contributing to the mental health challenges that we are facing today. The deputy commissioner of the Connecticut Department of Public Health says today's announcement should come as a wake-up call. Firearms are now the leading cause of death in children. And that's really a wake-up call. It's higher than cancer, it's higher than motor vehicle accidents, it's higher than drowning, poisoning, all of the other things that we think of that may 
you know, children may die from, firearms is now number one. Officials at Connecticut Children's Medical Center say they've seen this impact, and today's announcement should spur a conversation. Talk about responsible gun ownership. Talk about ensuring that firearms are stored safely. And in any home where your child spends time, make sure of that. Ask questions and ensure that when people do own firearms, that they're storing them uh, correctly. State lawmakers say Connecticut is ahead of the curve in addressing gun violence and can be used as an example across the country. We passed a bill in 2022 where the Commissioner of Public Health oversees a gun violence intervention program for the past two years. While some praise the Surgeon General for addressing this as a public health crisis, some critics say this is just politics. The NRA released this statement in response, saying it's the Biden administration's war on law-abiding gun owners, saying it's a problem of addressing crime. But officials with Connecticut Against Gun Violence say this is not a political issue. It's not a political issue. It is a public health issue. It doesn't have to be this way and it shouldn't be this way. And if it's labeled as a political issue, people can brush it aside. And if you'd like to learn more about today's announcement, we have a link to the Surgeon General's full advisory on fox61.com. Reporting in studio, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Jake, thank you very much. Well, new here at 10, an Ansonia man facing charges in a crash that left one person dead. It happened last summer, and state police say 25-year-old Isaiah Turner surrendered yesterday. He's facing manslaughter, assault, and DUI charges. They believe he was under the influence the morning of July 29th. That's when his car crashed the yellow line and hit another car head on. Police say he tested positive for multiple drugs. Turner is being held on a $200,000 bond. Thousands of Connecticut firefighters have joined in on a class action lawsuit targeting several companies they accuse of exposing them to dangerous chemicals. 4,000 firefighters are suing 3M, DuPont, and other companies. All of them were involved in making protective gear with PFAS chemicals or forever chemicals. Now those chemicals can be absorbed through the skin leading to several illnesses and diseases. The firefighters are seeking at least $5 million in damages. A group in Southington's lobbing big accusations against the town, saying it trespassed on its property and damaged a wildlife sanctuary in the process. And this entire problem appears to be from the installation of a pipe. Fox 61's Kaylee Collins joining us live from Southington tonight to explain this pipe problem. Kaylee. Bridget, Sarah, the town allegedly put that pipe into place to deal with some neighborhood flooding issues. The problem is that the rainwater has been draining onto property owned by the Southington Land Conservation. They say that the town did not have their permission to use this space and they also did not get the proper permits for it. The Southington Land Trust wants a pipe recently installed on their property out. Well, they didn't get wetlands permit. They didn't contact us. It's private property. The location at issue, the Wedgwood Wildlife Sanctuary on Wedgwood Road. Though it's a wetland, the land trust claims that excess storm water draining from the pipe might cause damage and disrupt the public trailhead. It's putting water where it didn't used to go. The Southington Public Works Department says the action wasn't malicious, but an effort to assist neighbors dealing with flooding. One resident did allow us to talk to them off camera and they described kind of what they're working with here property wise when it storms. So rain comes down from the hill up here and then goes through that rainwater, goes through a path that was already created by the town. They say that this new pipe has actually been helping to expedite and get rid of more of that stormwater when it happens. And since then, I haven't seen <laughs> it hasn't flooded. Residents want the pipe to stay, arguing it's not having a negative impact on the sanctuary. No one wants to walk in there. It's filled with water and mosquitoes. The land trust demands the town find another solution. This is not a good thing and we want it rectified. Now, we did reach out to the Public Works Director who told us that an application has been submitted to the Wetlands Conservation Committee. That's scheduled to be heard on July 11th. Live in Southington tonight, Kaylee Collins, Fox 61, Connecticut's News Station.